Chapter 12. The front door was open and John rushed into the living room where he had left his mother. She was not there now, but on the chair in a small wet lace handkerchief. On the chair was a small wet lace handkerchief. John ran into the dining room and on to the kitchen. As he came to the kitchen door, he heard the ring of, a, of silver against crockery. Then he saw a wonderful sight. His mother arranging the coffee things on a tray. He dashed into the kitchen and flung his arms around his mother's waist, sobbing and laughing with relief and joy. There, there, said Mrs. Midas, stroking the hair from John's forehead. You've had a very disturbing day, dear, but in a few minutes we're all going to have supper and everything will be fine again. Goodness, I do believe I need some strong coffee myself. I felt so strange just then in the other room. I really don't know what came over me. The door from the garden opened and Mr. Midas came in. Before we settle down, Mr. Midas said to John, have a good have a glass of good cold milk. You look so hot. So, they didn't know what had happened to her? Well, John thought he certainly wouldn't scare them by tell telling them. He watched gratefully as his mother took a frosty blue jug from the refrigerator and poured from it a glass full of icy, creamy milk. Trembling with nervousness, John tilted the glass against his open mouth. The liquid flowed in and down his throat and remained purely milky, deliciously milky, tasting of nothing but fresh, clean milk. After the first long, wonderful gulps, he suddenly recalled that he had not thanked the storekeeper for saving his mother. Mother, he said, may I go out for a minute? I'll be right back. All right, John, she said, but supper will be ready in 10 minutes. Don't keep us waiting. John ran briskly down the street until he came to the corner where he always turned right when he was going to Susan's house. There he turned left instead and started along the two blocks of unfamiliar street leading to the candy store. Soon he came to the corner where the red brick building had been, but there was no building and no store and, of course, no storekeeper. In the corner lot there was nothing to be seen but a heap of rusty tin cans and broken bottles surrounding a signboard with a new lettering that said sold the end